Okay, this video is on areas of squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. And we're going to start off with a definition of area. Area is just the number of two-dimensional square units inside a polygon. So, if our polygon happens to be a square, I have a picture of a square, three inches by three inches, I can divide this square up into nine one-inch squares. That is nine one-inch square units. So the area of this square is just going to be, I can just count up my square units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the area of my square is nine square units. That's also equal to three times three, the length of the height of the square and the base of the square, three times three. And we often write this as base times height. And in a square, the base and the height are both the same, so it would just be, we could say the side squared if we wanted to. So in example 1a in your notes, it says find the, given a square with the following sides, find the area of each square. Example 1a, we have a square that's 4 by 4, so the area would just be 4 times 4, which is 16 square units. In 1b, we have a square that is, has 12 a side that is 12, so 12 times 12 is 144 square units. And in C, we have a square that we don't actually have a number for the length of the side, we just have a variable. So we can say the area of the square is x squared square units. Now the area of a rectangle is very similar to that of a square. The area of a rectangle is, again, the base times the height, although in the case of a rectangle, the base and the height are generally not the same number. So again, we've got a couple of examples here. Example 2a, the base is 9, the height is 4, so our area would be 9 times 4, which would be 36 square units. And example 2b, our area is 12, our, our base is 12, and our height is x. So our area is just going to be 12 times x, or 12x square units. Now the area of a parallelogram is very similar to that of a rectangle, and you see at the bottom of your notes there's uh, kind of a, uh, an illustration that we're going to take a look at in class a little bit later. For now we're just going to note that the area of a parallelogram is in fact the formula is the same as that of a rectangle. It's base times height. Notice, however, that for a parallelogram, while the base of the parallelogram is kind of self-explanatory, it's just the length of one bottom side of the parallelogram, the height is not this slanted side of the parallelogram. The height is what we also have called the altitude uh, in, when we talked about triangles, it's the distance from a vertex or a corner point of the parallelogram, and it's, parale it's perpendicular to the opposite side. So this distance here, this dotted line, that is the height of our parallelogram. So while our formula is the same as the formula for the area of a rectangle, base times height, the value of the height is slightly different. It's not the length of a side of the parallelogram. So, in examples 3a, using this formula is fairly easy if we are given the length of the base and the length of the height. So, we're given those two values in example 3a. So, the area of this parallelogram is just base times height. Our base is 8. Our height is 3. So, our area is going to be 24 square units. Example 3b, we're, given, we're told the base of our parallelogram is 10 and our height is 4. So again, our area is just base times height. Our base, we're told, is 10. Our height is 4. And we've got an area of 40 square units. So that's fairly straightforward if we're given the base and the height. But let's take a look at a couple of examples where we have parallelograms. We're trying to find the area of the parallelograms, but we're not given the height. Well, if we don't have the height, that means we're going to have to figure it out. So here's a parallelogram, example 4a, and we see that 
we don't have the value of the height. Well, in order to calculate the area, I need to know the value of this height. Well, so I'm going to have to figure that out. So let me take this triangle here, and let me break that out over here, just the triangle piece. And I notice this leg is 5, my hypotenuse is, excuse me, this leg is 3, my hypotenuse is 5, and this side over here, the other leg, that's the height of my parallelogram. Well, since I've got a right triangle and I know the lengths of two of the sides of the triangle, I can use my Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus h squared equals 5 squared. And if I do my algebra here, I get, oops, I get 9 plus h squared equals 25. Subtract 9 for both sides, and I get h squared equals 16. I take the square root of both sides, and I get h equals 4. Now I have the value for the height of my parallelogram. So I can plug that in here for h. My base is going to be this distance here, the length of this side. This piece is 3, this piece is 9, so my whole base is 12. My height is 4. Therefore, the area of my parallelogram is 48 square units. Let's take a look at example 4b. Again, I know the length of the base of my parallelogram. It's going to be the length of this piece plus the length of this piece. So 13 and 5, that's going to be 18. But I don't know the height. I'm looking for this value here, my height. Well, once again, I'm going to take this right triangle and I'm going to break it out on its own over here. So now I have a right triangle, and I know that this angle here is 45. Well, if since it's a right triangle, I've got 90 degrees here, 45 degrees here. That means I know the value of this angle is also 45 degrees, which means now I know I have one of my special triangles, a 45-45-90 triangle, and I remember that for a 45-45-90 triangle, the ratio of the lengths of the sides of the triangle is always 1 to 1 to radical 2, which means if the length of this leg is 5, the length of this leg must also be 5. Now I know the value of the height of my parallelogram. So now I can use my area equation. Base is going to be 13 plus 5, that's 18. My height is 5. And 18 times 5, 18 times 5 is 40. 1 times 5 equals 90 square units.